Welcome to Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. We got another win to talk about. <laughs> a big one. We're stacking up. Three in a row. It's amazing. Sitting atop that <coughs> NFC South. What a beautiful time of year for the holiday season. The gift that keeps on giving to the Bucks fans is the success we're having right now in December at Lambeau. I just feel like this was such a cool moment and what it meant for this team and the trajectory that they're on and just the the vibes, the feels right now about the direction they're going and especially Baker Mayfield. I mean, what yeah. a what a performance from him. The, Car the Carolina game. Yeah, I think you were expected to win that one. It was rainy. It, was, it wasn't that exciting, but it was good to get a win. The Atlanta game was critical because mm -hmm. it was like a battle to get into first place. But the Green Bay game, that was fun. That was a lot of fun to watch, and mostly because of Baker. I think everybody's probably heard this note already, but for posterity, the first visiting quarterback ever to have a perfect passer rating. You just saw the number there on the screen, 158.3 in Lambeau Field. That place has been around for a while, Casey. Yeah. They didn't I, just build it. I've heard it's, uh, it's got a little history to it there. <laughs> 66 seasons, and he's the first one to do it. And think about all the quarterbacks that means have yeah. played there. It's unbelievable. And I think, isn't he only even the second overall? It was the first visit. Isn't only him I and think, Aaron Rodgers yeah, that have yeah. done it at all? Yes. That it's is incredible. Correct. It's good company to be in. Yeah. Um, he was so sharp. And I, I think what we saw was this offense coming together the way it's been envisioned. Mike, as you see there, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin both having big days. Um, Chris had 155 yards, Mike had 57 and a touchdown, and the running game was working. So they had answers for everything. And Green Bay sat mostly in zone, a lot of cover three, and Dave Canales had answers for it. And Baker delivered on those plays. I mean, look at this, this spray chart here of where he was throwing his passes. It's a lot of green dots because they were mostly complete. but. He was getting the ball downfield. He was getting the, the short ones on third downs converted. Uh, he threw on third down 10 times and got a first down seven of them. Jeez. That's a great, great day. Now, if you look at this against the zone, I was just saying how good he was, but also 23 of his passes, there, he took five sacks. That mm -hmm. wasn't great, but 23 of his passes, there was no pressure. And I mean, when he had even a little time, he was practically flawless. Look at those numbers. I mean, what more can you ask for? Absolutely. And, and the third down passing and the seam passes. I mean, if you look at the play, watch um, Rondé Barber's video uh, film session this week and watch him break down the touchdown pass to Rashad White. And you could just see the beautiful design of that play and how Baker perfectly went through looking this guy off, looking this guy off and then hitting Rashad in the mm. seam. And it, I mean, the play was, gorgeous to watch at the time but then seeing it broken down and why it worked it, it's a lot of fun as a Bucks fan to see that and go wow Dave Canales has answers he does and one mm. of them this week was definitely Chris Godwin uh, yeah. we saw a lot of production a lot of usage from him just one of his better games as a buck as well which is saying something mm -hmm. for his career and um, it felt like we saw him in the slot a little bit more which was interesting yep. but just in general I mean what a what a game for him and, and the connection we saw with him and Baker yeah, it was his third 155 yards so it's his third highest uh, yardage total of his career and it's been a good career mm -hmm. as you're aware he's over 500 catches now in his career 10 catches on the day and you're correct he did play a little bit more in the slot which harkens back to what he'd been doing the previous three years in the Tom Brady era not quite as much this year in the slot because they wanted to sh they wanted to use him in other ways the same thing they've done with Mike they're using Mike in a lot of different ways and, and, and that's good because you want to be able to show looks that look like something they've seen before and then mm -hmm. do something else out of yep. them. Now, in this game, part of the strategy was to work Chris out of the slot a little bit more, and especially, again, on third downs, four of his catches converted third down. So um, it, it's just a, it's more of the development of the offense, putting guys in different spots and doing things that look like one thing that the defense has seen before but become something else. And I know that also, when, as we talk about that, the way that Rashad White has been able to be a part of that, of when you have Mike and Chris, you're trying to get them going, but then you have Rashad as well, that all that balance, we saw it all helping each other. They've talked about it. the goal is to get all those people involved because you then help each other out. And mm -hmm. Rashad yep. now, I mean, seven touchdowns in seven weeks, yeah. and it's just consistently each week now you're seeing it, it was not a fluke of one week of where Early on, the pass game to him was working. The run game, maybe not as much. Now all of it's working. He's just become such an overall versatile weapon. It's blowing my mind. He could probably have two more touchdowns, but he keeps doing the slide down to end the game thing, yep. uh, which is the smart thing to do. But, I mean, if you're a fantasy football player. In fact, yeah. in fact, you know, if you, if you have Rashad White in fantasy football, I know we're not here to talk about fantasy football, but I'm making a point that you love him because he does it one way or another every week he gets it done. Mm -hmm. Some days maybe it'll be like this one. It was 89 on the ground and 50 in the air. Sometimes it might be 40 on the ground and 80 in the air. And as you said, seven touchdowns in the last seven games. So he scores basically every week and he gets 100 yards one way or another basically every week. So fantasy players love him. But those seven touchdowns in the last seven weeks are among the league leaders 
in that cat. I think Christian McCaffrey has the most, but um, just to score that many times, he's he's become so reliable. Every week he's getting you points. Yeah, and look at that stat. Joins yeah. just Warwick Dunn. Who we love. Which, yes, obviously every Bucks fan goes, oh, that's some good company to be in as well. So I love that. The future <coughs> is bright. Just those first couple years, we've already seen what he can be. And also, again, to just see, for me, to watch this offense gel and come together, and Coach Canales talked about it earlier in the year, of, hey, it's going to take time. It's a new system and a new quarterback and a new offensive line and all these things. And maybe it took longer than they wanted or we wanted, but we're seeing it now all really gel together. And it's so cool to see that they didn't abandon the run game when it oh, wasn't working yeah. earlier this <laughs> yeah. year. They definitely still stuck with it and we're seeing the D payout. Dave Canales said this past week, or last week I think, he said, I'm never gonna abandon the run. Mm -hmm. And, he, and it, it's not just, lip service because we've seen it. We've seen mm -hmm. games where it wasn't working, but he still ran the ball 27 times. Yep. And now that it's working, you know, Rashad slid there at the end and, and then um, Baker kneeled twice and lost a yard each time to end the game. And we ended up with 99 yards. Otherwise we would have had four straight hundred yard rushing games. And it's just an anomaly. It doesn't matter. But um, over the last four weeks, the running game has been there. Yep, and then also we've seen Mike Evans continues to move up the <laughs> stats, the charts. We love talking about that. Whether it's Mike, Antoine, or Levante, there's yeah. a segment every week that just needs yeah. to be about the stats that are <laughs> happening. And we should just call this the Evans-Levante yeah, Winfield, Winfield show. show. Yeah, that especially with Mike and Levante, every week it is not only just a cool stat, but it's something about the history of the NFL yeah. <laughs> moving up a chart. And so where is Mike now in that? So he caught his 92nd touchdown pass. He also has a 93rd touchdown on a fumble recovered, but 92 touchdown receptions. That moved him up one more spot to tied for 12th with Devontae Adams, who's still active and can add to his total, and Rob Gronkowski, his former teammate. So um, that means only 11 players in the history of the NFL have caught more touchdown passes than Mike. Now, we've been doing this all year, as you said, because each time he catches another one, he moves up a spot, he moves up a spot. Now there's going to be a little bit of break, and I'm not sure he'll catch the next spot until next season because it's 99, and that's where former Packer from like the 50s and 60s, Don Hudson, is 99, and then there's another step to 100. So he's going to get to 100, and he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. But we may not have another uh, another one of these notes for a while, so we should celebrate. We're going to just we relish it yes. right now. And so then, of course, now time for the Antoine Winfield <laughs> version of this. Tell me the, the stat that he produced that was so incredible. Well, he got his... Um, he got his fifth forced, forced fumble. fumble of the season, uh, almost got on the ball. It was, was kind of cool to watch that replay, and I don't think he, he realizes and he tries to die for it, but the receiver got back to it, or the pass catcher or whoever it was. And um, so that he is second, tied for second in the league in forced fumbles. Um, I think we've had this note for a while, but he's got – five forced fumbles, four sacks, three fumble recoveries. It's a stat line that hasn't been seen by a defensive back in the NFL since. He sounds like the beginning of the 12 Days of Christmas song. <laughs> that, like, I feel five like we should make a version of that. Fumbles. Yes. Oh, that, that we, was terrible. That we need to make a version of that for him of all the different stat categories yeah. and see if we can fill up 12 Days of, of Antoine Winfield. Can we cut out the part where I was singing though? No, that, that we're going to go lead well. with that. <laughs> we're going to lead with that in a cold open. I wonder if we could do that 12, 11, 10. We, I could find probably most of those. I like this idea. This is going to be I'm good. I'm going to steal that. Um, and then now also Shaq and Levante, we got to, as we said, we've always got to talk about Levante on here, but um, we got a chance to see the strip sack that they were involved in as well on this play. And we know that even though it was a fourth down situation, it still was a very big play in terms of the momentum and what it meant in the game. Yeah, so they combined on the, oh, their collided slip. They combined on the, um, the final sack, Levante and, and he did, and Shaq did, and there's, there's the forced fumble. Logan Hall recovered it. And that, the forced fumble itself was credited to Shaq and that's cool because he's really, really good at that. I mean, since he came here in 2019, and we remember that first year, just incredible 19 and a half sacks, but he has been producing uh, all, all those years. And this year, the sack total isn't real high, but Coach Bowles was saying yesterday that he does so much more that doesn't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. So it's not all about sacks. It's about pressure on the quarterback. It's about drawing blockers so other guys can get there. But every now and then he does do the strip sack. And as you can see, he's the king of that since he got here in 2019. And I mean, look at the names on that list. Wow. Miles Garrett may be the player, the defensive player of the year this year. TJ Watt could be also and has already been. Hassan Reddick has been a great pass rusher for the last couple of years. So, um, you yep. know, to be on top of that list is pretty cool. <coughs> and we've gotten a chance to see Levante be back after missing some time. And just the impact he has on this defense. And again, the level of even we've talked about all season at his age. Then he also has another injury, comes back and still just seems to be playing at such an elite level. He doesn't look like he's now 
in my mind, 33 is a young man. Right. But <laughs> I would Nothing like to like be 33. to make yes. everybody feel way older that's when they're supposed, talking about an ancient 33-year-old. Yeah. That's supposedly old by NFL standards, but he looks like he's playing like he's 27 years old. Um, I just think he makes so much of a difference to how calm and collected and well-organized the defense is when he's out there. And he came back after that injury, and we've played Atlanta, and we played Green Bay. Atlanta had one of the best rushing attacks in the league. We held them to 50 yards fewer than they usually get. Uh, Green Bay got Aaron Jones back, and you saw right away in the beginning of that game, thought it could be a problem, had a couple big runs. But after that, they shut him down in the run and only allowed 60 yards. So this defense under Todd Bowles over these five years has always worked better when the run defense is good. And so if that run defense is, can be good down the stretch here, that'll be a big deal for the Bucks' playoff hopes. And then I know we're going to do an entire separate video about the path to the playoffs and all the scenarios and everything it's going to take. But just for now, kind of hit on some high-level stuff in terms of this week. NFC South, NFC situation, some of the key matchups to be watching this week as we tell people as they are, of course, spending wonderful time with friends and family, but also maybe keeping an eye on the televisions <laughs> for the football. Got some Christmas Eve uh, football. Yeah, a little Christmas Eve football going on. What are some of the things that people can pay attention to? Well, the Bucks win in Green Bay was big, and it was a good weekend. New Orleans did win over the Giants, which wasn't unexpected. But Atlanta lost to Carolina on a last-second field goal which I did not expect, but will gratefully take. So now they're a game back and a little bit in trouble. Uh, they, they were in control of this division two weeks ago, and now they're in trouble. But the Bucks' playoff odds, according to those playoff calculators, is up to 78%, and they control their own destiny. They're tied with the Saints, have a head-to-head -head victory against them now. That won't matter much if they lose to New Orleans in Week 8-17. But right now the Buccaneers have the tiebreaker and are in fourth, the fourth seed in the NFC. And so now we know they are going to face fellow Florida foe, the <laughs> and, Jacksonville Jaguars. And fellow first place team. Yes. So uh, we know this is going to be an interesting matchup, especially just not really knowing about Trevor Lawrence's situation, whether or not he's going to play, what a huge factor he is for their team. So as you look forward to this matchup, what stands out to you knowing that even though maybe this isn't the most important game during this whole stretch in terms of what it would mean for the playoff implications, knowing that basically every game at this point is incredibly important. Yeah, the Trevor Lawrence thing is going to be the story of the week. I was just doing a, an interview with the Jaguars people and listening to their parts before mine. I don't, it so, sounds like they don't expect him to play. And the thing about Trevor is he's very, very tough, and he's played through several injuries this year, and he, in his three years he's never missed a start. But you are not allowed to play through a concussion. Yeah. You have to finish, get out of the mm -hmm. protocol. So it has nothing to do with his toughness. And uh, it sounds like they are expecting that he won't play. So we would we would face C.J. Beathard. I wouldn't say that's a certainty yet. Mm -hmm. But there's certainly a good chance the Buccaneers will be facing C.J. Beathard, who had 12 starts with San Francisco, went 2-10 in those starts. He's been in the JAG system before. I think he was with them in 2021. So he knows the system so that's good for them and there are a lot of good weapons on that offense Christian Kirk is on injury reserve but Travis Etienne is basically if think of Rashad White and what he's doing Etienne's basically doing the exact same thing um, they have a great receiver in Calvin Ridley who we know from his days with the Falcons and Evan Ingram catches a ton of passes and then on defense uh, really some of the numbers aren't great but they have two great edge rushers in Josh Allen and Trevon Walker. Josh Allen's having a Pro Bowl type season and they are tied for the league, league in takeaways. So this defense, even if it doesn't have great numbers overall, has some answers and they you have to worry about them. You know, this time of year, we are typically talking about injuries for every team. That By this time, you know, you're usually so banged up and this is why we were so upset that the Bucs had such an early bye week of, oh man, this could end up rough down the season. Man, if you look at this injury report from this week already, now we're shooting this Thursday morning. We only have Wednesdays to go off of, but it was one of the best looking injury reports that the Bucks have had all season practically. At least for a while. At least for a while. And just how incredible that is to be having to say that at this point in the season in December when yeah. it's been so long since your bye week. Well, Todd Bowles says he couldn't remember the last time that the uh, injury st status for the entire roster looked this good. Nobody was held completely out of practice. Everybody was either full or limited. Uh, even Rakim Jarrett, who's been on IR, has been designated for return and was a full participant in practice. But the Buccaneers have weathered the storm with some of these in injuries with Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean and Levante David and Devin White and Vita Vea. And a lot of guys missing time from time to time. They've weathered the storm, won three in a row, and now are sort of getting the fruits of their labor now. Um, you know, the winning streak is, is still on, and they're getting a lot of help back. Yeah. I think the most interesting part of this whole thing will be Carlton Davis was a full participant. Jamel Dean returned last week. If those two come back, you got Zion McCollum has been playing great. Mm -hmm. And Coach Bowles said they will find a way to use Zion McCollum. Which also 
shameless plug, had Zion McCollum on the radio show nice. this week. If you have not listened to it, he is wonderful. <laughs> Just a great dude, so fun to talk to, and gave a lot of really cool stories, especially about going to the same high school as Mike Evans. And so it was very fun. But yeah, he just talks about how much more confidence he's playing with yeah, sure. and how much it means to him that it seems like everybody trusts him. He's oh, like, that's, that's cool. what it's all about, is that I feel like they trust me. Well, and I thought that was really cool. You have to earn that trust. Yeah, and he did. has. He absolutely has. All right, we're going to end with this sort of fun little nugget here. We got to <laughs> give a shout out to Code Keith with his touchdown. First catch of the season, a touchdown. He does the spike. Well, <laughs> I know we all know somebody who's done a few of those kind of spikes in their career that uh, wore a Buccaneers jersey for a little bit, decided to consult with Gronk. How was it? <laughs> and he said, you know, a little awkward, but great passion, 4.1 out of five. Yeah, that's pretty clever on his part, 4.1? Yeah. Because his number's 41? Oh, I hadn't even picked up I, on that. I imagine that's why he did that. God, that's, that's great. Good. I enjoy that. That's yep. his first catch of the year. He's one of three players in the league right now with one catch and one touchdown. Efficient. Yes. Very <laughs> efficient. All right. That's going to, oh, yeah? He took a face full of pylon to get it, though. I mean, it, he basically went over the pylon with his face. That's so funny. That's <laughs> such a tight end move. Like, I will get this some way. All right, well, thank you for joining us. That's going to do it for us here on Bucks Insider. We'll see you next time and have a great holiday season.